Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, we've been on a journey together since Easter, searching for a place to call home, a place where we belong, a place where we know that we can feel the spirit and the presence of God. On Easter morning, we, we began with a gathering of disciples who had seen the empty tomb and they had gone to the Sea of Galilee as Jesus had instructed. And while there, Jesus approached them and introduced them to this idea of home, reminding them that they would never <laughs> again be alone, that forever they will be filled with the Holy Spirit and part of the family of God. Next, we learned that all are welcome, and when we say all, we mean all. all. Thank you. We have learned together how to avoid fear and doubt and to embrace the risen Christ as an open and welcoming presence. And then we consider that everyone has a place at the table, even our enemies. And Jesus teaches us to demonstrate extravagant hospitality and to focus on the unity of the body not the division. Our next lesson was always room for one more. We learned that God continues to seek us. There's always room for one more believer, one more follower of Jesus Christ, one more evangelist to share the good news. And then last Sunday, we learned that uh, we become a church where love abides where we can reside in love, where we can share love with the world and be loved in return. Which leads us to this morning, where we consider always blessing and always blessed. Our story begins after Jesus had spent 40 days with his disciples, appearing with them and, and being with them and proving to them that he was in fact alive. He, he even told them one day that he was hungry and, and he shared a meal with them. Clearly, Jesus was with them and a part of them again. And they were eager for him to restore the kingdom to Israel. They were confused because they thought that Jesus' reign was a, a political feat. They continued to press him about taking control and bringing the Jews into their rightful place as God's chosen people. And as much as Jesus tried to explain to them that his kingdom was not of this earth, his followers always expected something very different. And he responds to their request for information about when he would restore the kingdom to Israel by saying, it's not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. We are not to know. It's, it's God's business, right? It's, it's God's story to tell. And the promise of power was again reiterated by the promise of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus said would come and transform their lives and our lives forevermore. And then before their very eyes, Jesus then floated up into the sky. Scripture says, hidden by a cloud, he was gone, disappeared. It reminds me of a time when, when Leisha and I went uh, and got miniature hot air balloons. Do you remember that day? I don't know if you've seen them. They're small little like miniature hot air balloons and you light the little packet on the bottom and it fills up with air. Both of our siblings were battling cancer, and we went to Veterans Park to light them and say a prayer together and, and then send them off. And at first, the balloon began to fill up and just very slowly rise, and then pretty soon it just took off. And we stood there for a long time watching them float off into the heavens done that before? Watched something until it's out of sight? 
back in the day when we could go and, and say goodbye to loved ones at the, at the gate, at, at the airport. Do you remember those days? And I can remember as a kid, you know, watching for the airplane to take off and, and waiting there until you couldn't see it anymore, until it disappeared. Well, the disciples watched intently as Jesus got smaller and smaller and smaller and was gone. And then they were interrupted by, by two men dressed in white who appeared standing beside them. On one hand, we have Jesus who's disappeared, and then on the other hand, we have these two men appearing virtually out of nowhere. And, and they say, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Ascension Sunday today reminds us of this dramatic departure. This is the day on our church calendar where we celebrate Jesus' ascension, <clears throat> returning to heaven. And in all honesty, ascension is a rather difficult idea for us modern folks to understand. I mean, people don't just disappear, right? But in the first century, the understanding of the cosmos was different from our understanding today. People understood heaven to be a literal place. Geographically, it was up from the earth. Most thought that the earth was flat, so the only place to go was up. And they realized, they could visualize Jesus leaving them and, and going up into heaven. And with our scientific view of the cosmos, we know that there really is no up or down in the universe. Even our notion of heaven is not a geographical location or a direction. And when contemporary people think of the ascension, it's a little hard to imagine Jesus just kind of flying off like a one-person space shuttle off into the Neverlands. Yet, despite our scientific reservations, the story of the Ascension is spiritually important to us. The Ascension was the Church's way of dealing with a fundamental fact. The earliest disciples had experienced the bodily Christ, His presence as the risen Lord, the one who was no longer under the claim of death. And then, before their very eyes, he ascended into heaven. He had risen now into heaven. And Christians today have the same circumstance. We believe in a risen Lord who is no longer physically present with us. The body of Jesus is no longer here, except it is body of Christ, which is the church. And so on Ascension Sunday today, we do well to think about what Jesus' physical absence means for Christians today. First, the absence of the physical Jesus causes us to take seriously this idea of the church being the body of Christ. And this is a concept we've talked a lot about. It's something we're very familiar with. We say that the church is the body of Christ without really maybe thinking what that actually means. But if the church is the body of Christ, then we are called to give to the church the devotion and respect that Christ deserves. We are to embrace the opportunity to always be blessing others and to be blessed ourselves. So think about it. How precious is your church to you? How central to your life is our church's mission? It's easy for us to think that we would respond to the physical presence of Jesus with all the love and devotion that we could humanly sustain. Yet we often treat the church as just one more volunteer community organization. Now, civic clubs do good work. Health-related charities appeal to us, especially if we have lost a loved one to a disease and the charity seeks to help that. Organizations that support our schools 
do vital and important work, but none of those organizations are the body of Christ. Only the church is Jesus among us. Its mission, our mission, is to be consistent with Jesus' mission. The love we have for the church is a representation of the love that we have for Jesus. And this, the church, is the closest that we will ever come on earth to having Jesus to care for and to love. And today, on Ascension Sunday, we are called to reassess our devotion to the church as the physical body of Christ among us. The risen Lord is not here. He has ascended. But the body of Christ is very much here. And that is the way that we treat the church, is the way that we treat the risen Lord. Ascension Sunday also reminds us that we are each individually a part of the body of Christ. To honor the church as we honor Christ is also to remember that in a powerful way, that we are all part of this body of Christ. And when we neglect our part of the mission of our church, we disable the body of Christ. And as Paul said, each of us has a physical part in this body of Christ. We are the arms and the legs. We are the eyes and the ears. We are the limbs and organs of Christ's present body. And when we fail to do our part, our body becomes disabled. Christ becomes disabled without the limb or the organ that each of us is called and gifted to be. The absence of the physical body of Jesus places a claim upon all of us to relate to the church as we would relate to Christ Jesus. It also reminds us that without our individual faithfulness to our role in the church, the body of Christ is weakened. Now last, Ascension Sunday reminds us that if Christ's work is to continue, it's up to us to do it. Now that's not to say that we won't receive some godly help in blessing others and being blessed. God is always with us, leading and guiding us to fulfill the mission that he has laid out for us. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating Pentecost. Those of you who have red in your closet, be sure and wear it, because that's what we like to do on Pentecost Sunday. But next week, we'll celebrate our empowerment by the Holy Spirit, by, by this divine help comes to empower us in doing the work of Christ. You see, Jesus is no longer here to heal the sick. He is no longer here to touch the outcast. He is no longer here to personally feed the hungry. It's up to us, the body of Christ, to continue his work. And if the church fails to be the body of Christ, Jesus is absent. <coughs> And if the church fails to be the body of Christ, Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Yes, today we celebrate sort of an obscure Christian holiday. It celebrates an event that is difficult for most of us modern, scientific, mindful folks uh, can imagine. It's hard to take it literally that he just loaded up. But at the same time, this is a critical day in our personal and collective self-understanding, it's significant that our Lord ascended into heaven. His ascension invites us to relate to the church as we would to Christ. It reminds each of us that the, of the critical nature of our role in the body of Christ. It calls us to take up Jesus' work here on earth. And when we change our gaze from following Jesus into the atmosphere and we look around, we see how we are to live out our call to be the hands and feet of Christ. And it is when we focus on the people who are in front of us, who are in need, that we can experience what it is to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. When we become a blessing, and bless others, we find the joy that the disciples had when they returned, Scripture says, to the temple, worshiping Jesus with great joy. 
this week we had the opportunity to do something pretty tremendous to be the hands and feet of Christ some of you may remember at Christmas time we were able to bless a family that lived in North Las Vegas they were homeless do you remember talk, me talking about Missy we've talked about her a few times over the last few months well she and her two children have been living uh, in a, a room at a friend's house for months She's finally gotten a job. She was able to find an apartment that would rent to her that she could afford. And our church, with the help of St. Christopher's Episcopal Church, Trinity United Methodist Church, and several private donations, have been able to put together her first month's rent and the uh, uh, deposits that were needed so that they could move into their place that they call home. These past seven months have been difficult. I'd be lying to you if I told you that Missy had not given up. There were many times she would message me through Facebook just scared and fearful that she would never be able to get back out on her own. And many times she had given up. And I would encourage her not to give up, that in God's perfect time, things would come together the right job and the right living situation so that she could finally have that home with her children. She asked that I express to you her uh, thanks and her love for all of you for not giving up on her. She's thankful for the help that we've provided and numerous times this past week in particular she has messaged me that she was in tears with joy. Now we still could use a little bit more. So if there's anyone who would like to help with her needs, uh, let me know. A check with her name on it would be wonderful. Uh, whatever you could do would be terrific. We also have received donations of furniture. Uh, Shay has donated a couch, thank you my dear. Cheryl Sneed has uh, offered for me to come over uh, and see if there's anything at John's uh, apartment, uh, house, excuse me, that perhaps she could use. Uh, so I'm also looking for some strong folks if you can uh, help load a, a bed or two and some couches. Uh, we hope to take that over to her first of the week. And I did have a request from one of the kids. A TV would be fabulous. If you have a spare, please let us know. So dear ones, to be a blessing, always blessing, is to be blessed ourselves. And knowing that this woman will not be on the street again, and that through us, God has blessed her beyond imagination, and that in the process, we are all blessed, knowing that we have been part of her answered prayer, that God has used us to be the hands and feet of Christ to transform this family. And to that I say, well done, church.